Today, there was a big announcement in the world of Magic the Gathering, and that is that TCG Player will be acquiring Channel Fireball. Now, this is big news because for over a decade, Channel Fireball has been a place to buy cards, consume Magic content, and also uh, has been viewed as a competitor of sorts to TCG Player because TCG Player is the biggest place to buy Magic the Gathering cards. This has prompted people to be worried about consolidation within the market, saying it will hurt consumers or things like that. And I just wanted to provide my insight as someone who has a degree in economics to kind of explain the concept behind this merger and also go into a little bit of information on what it will entail for customers by going through partially the announcement uh, from TCG Player. This is the announcement they made press release. This is the Channel Fireball press release and uh, just kind of go through what the merger entails, why it might have happened and things of that nature. So first of all, if you've never heard of TCG Player, it is a place to buy cards. So if you wanted to buy Lightning Bolt, these are all of the options that you would have. You can click on an individual Lightning Bolt. Let's just say you want to buy the one from Baldur's Gate, the newest one, and then you can scroll down and you can be like, okay, I can buy from this guy for 54 cents, this guy for 59 cents, 60 cents, uh, and then like different conditions. You can sort by different things. And that's pretty much what TCG player does. You can buy all the cards you need and then you just buy them all at once and then just uh, you have all of these options of cards. And there's a bunch of different sellers critically because on TCG player, it functions almost like an Amazon thing where you can buy from individual companies that then list their product on TCG player channel. Uh, the channel fireball marketplace has a similar model. They also have different listings from different sellers. If I wanted to buy this lightning bolt, for example, I click on it. They have a bunch of different sellers and things like that. I have bought cards from both companies and both companies have provided great customer service and things like that. Uh, but TCG player uh, simply has far more scale than channel fireball. So if we look at something like like the lightning bolt, let's just say we want to buy the jumpstart one or the modern masters 2015 one on channel fireball. There are four listings and 23 listings respectively. Let's just see where the double, the modern masters 2015 lightning bolt falls here. Modern Masters 2015, there are 266 listings as compared to 23, so over 10 times as many, and there are 159 listings of this version as compared to four. So there's just far, far more uh, sellers listing things on TCG Player than Channel Fireball, which means that in my eyes, at least, this isn't a merger that is supposed to cause really horizontal integration. They talk about this in their article, but uh, of announcing things TCG Player does, where they talk about how this is part of their vertical expansion strategy. And I really want to talk about this topic because it's one that I think is very interesting. A vertical expansion strategy is one in which a company buys processes al along the production line. So in terms of, let's say that you are an oil company, if you are selling at gas stations, if you were to vertically expand your company, you might also buy an oil rig company, an oil processing company, a company that like ships oil from like place to place and things like that. So instead of having to pay other companies to provide this service, you do it within house. If you're a car company, if you also want to buy a tire company, that would maybe be vertical because then you don't have to buy the tires that you then put on your cars. It's all within house. A horizontal expansion strategy is one in which you merge with one of your potential competitors. So if two oil companies merge together, then all of a sudden they are uh, kind of and, and they both do the exact same thing. They both have gas stations. All of a sudden, there's only one gas station company where previously there were two. And that is sometimes a difficulty for consumers because then you have less competition within the market. However, as we have seen, TCG Player is so much bigger than Channel Fireball that it doesn't look like they're acquiring them for their marketplace, which is puny compared to their own. And even though it's technically a competition to theirs, there's also so much inherent competition within TCG player that it would not be likely to impact the consumer either way, because if somebody is selling cards for too much on TCG player, then one of their competitors, one of their other individual sellers will simply list it for less and things like that. The person more likely to be harmed in this situation is the middleman, the little store that lists their cards on channel fireball or on TCG player, because there is going to be a fee associated with selling their cards there. And if you are trying to sell your copies of lightning, Bolt and you have to pay a particular percentage, uh, it's going to be maybe a higher percentage if there is only one place where you can reasonably list your cards and expect to sell them. 
And so that is where uh, the damage might be done to a company. There's also the potential of people within the channel fireball company getting uh, fired or something of that nature uh, because they might not be needed after a merger. If you have a, two companies, uh, then there are going to be redundancies when one company acquires another. You maybe don't need to have as many people involved with uh, like like customer service potentially. Uh, you might want to have those extra people, but you also might not need two vice presidents of particular things, or you might not need in particular things like human resources. You don't need to have the same like size of both departments combined. You can be more efficient and uh, consolidate those. And so you might see people that have worked at Channel Fireball being uh, harmed by the uh, merger or something like that. Uh, but it's, it's much harder to see that stuff behind the scenes. And for a consumer, it's likely not going to be as harmful. Now, why would TCG Player want to acquire Channel Fireball if it's not really a huge competitor in terms of size of sales? And that is because of Channel Fireball's content arm and also because of this Binder POS company that I hadn't heard of until this merger announcement, but actually may be a pretty significant factor. So what is, first of all, the <laughs> Binder POS company? And then I'll talk about content a little bit. But Binder POS is a software that is designed to help manage large inventories with ease. Uh, they can do uh, simplify inventory management so you can concentrate on growing your business. And it sounds like, based on this announcement article, that TCG Player is very excited about the, P the Binder POS part of the company. In fact, if I do a little bit of a search here for the Binder POS thing, uh, <laughs> purpose gets <laughs> find it, found it. But there's a lot of stuff about the Binder POS. POS stands for point of sale, and it is where the retail actually happens. And it sounds like it's a way of integrating the company, the like game store selling card like cards or products in person to a consumer and also online at the same time and it sounds like tcg player is excited about the way that they could potentially expand into selling board games or comic books or baseball cards or really anything that a store would maybe have in person but maybe wouldn't list online but now that they uh, maybe have this binder pos software that they can use maybe they'll be able to do that so going through this article a little bit they have like basically announcing that they're going to be merging. They talk about Channel Fireball a little bit. They have their like little mission statement things, how they're going to work as a combined company. They're going to make things better, da, 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 all kind of the corporate mumbo jumbo that you expect them to say. Like even if it wasn't going to be beneficial, they'd say it. Uh, they have a little bit of a thing by Channel Fireball people talking about it. And uh, yeah, they also mention the content arm, which I did want to talk about. So they talk about Binder POS. They talk about the content arm. And this is really a big factor because TCG Player has made content in the past. They make stuff like that. But it, it, Channel Fireball is known for content. They have pros like Reed Duke, LSV, as some of the biggest names in content production, some of the most well-loved Magic players making content for them. And if you are a company that is trying to sell Magic cards, having people go to your website in and of itself is very valuable. It's much easier... Uh, for a consumer to simply read an article by Reed Duke about the new deck that he's liking and then just simply click to another um, like section of the same website to buy the cards versus like going to a whole nother place to buy the cards. It's not necessarily that much more difficult because it is online. You can like read Reed Duke's article and then go to TCG Player to buy your cards, but it is much nicer uh, if TCG Player has the person reading the article on their website and they can have like a link to the deck list so someone can immediately just like buy the cards with TCG Player. And that's just a really nice way to get eyes on your website to some degree and the content side of things seems like another major aspect of why tcg player would want to acquire channel fireball um it's just a very like natural thing as part of their vertical integrate expansion strategy if a person has to go to channel fireball for content and then tcg player to buy their cards that's inherently like not as favorable for TCG player as if somebody just goes to TCG player for content cards and all of their card selling needs as well. And so, yeah, they have strategic benefits that they list is uh, empower retailers because they're going to give their retailers access to the point of sale uh, software. So it sounds like TCG player wanted to be able to provide this for people selling on their website, uh, unite the most influential content brands. Um, I mean, I don't think TCG player was ever like really a huge content brand. I um, like, when, like any new player, when I was looking for content, Channel Fireball was a place that I got advised to look to and like never really found as much good stuff on TCG Player individually in terms of content. They have made content and they've made some good content, but it's never been the like hub of content that Channel Fireball has been, but that is likely to change now. 
and then they want to um, enhance customers with subscriber rewards. They haven't really talked about this in depth. Uh, Channel Fireball Pro, CFB Pro, it is, as it was known, was a way to access some of the premier content from Channel Fireball. And we don't know exactly how that is going to go, go, go going forward with TCG Player Merger. They haven't said anything to people that currently have Channel Fireball Pro yet, really, because um, they haven't actually finalized the merger. But I'm sure they will be very clear with it going forward because it sounds like that is a big priority for them. And... Uh, they want to create unrivaled rival value for subscribers, delivering on the full potential of both organizations. Uh, definitely a very interesting thing to monitor going forward um, because, yeah, TCG Player is a bigger company than Channel Fireball was in terms of the selling uh, cards portion of things. And so it'll be interesting to see how they kind of like deal with the subscriber rewards, potential things, whether or not the content will be free to access for everyone, whether it will be paywalled, whether it will have a similar model to the channel fireball one. Um, just very interesting. So they're going to continue providing updates and they're going to try to make sure nobody has severe disruption. So these are just, that was the TCG player side of the announcement. The channel fireball one was much shorter, but it was basically uh, the first thing that I noticed is that when channel fireball talks about it, they talk about how they're going to be combining with TCG player and TCG player talks about how they are going to be acquiring channel fireball. This is just just a PR spin. It never feels good to have your company like framed as getting bought out um, because it's honestly, it feels like maybe like a more of a partnership from Channel Fireball side of things, like becoming a content branch within TCG Player versus because their marketplace was never really as big of a competitor. And for TCG Player, it is an acquisition because they're getting a robust content branch and this binder POS, um, which is definitely like kind of, yeah kind of seems like it could be a potential win for both companies, but I'll do some more conclusion stuff at the end. But uh, Channel Fireball, they used to be an individual seller. They didn't used to have this marketplace. They used to just ha be a card seller. That changed when they got the binder POS thing. But I think that is worth noting as that's one of the reasons why their marketplace is so much smaller. Like they haven't been around for as long, like not even close to as long as TCG Player. So they haven't had the time to generate as many sellers as big of a database of cards as TCG player does uh, simply because partly because of the time factor that they have had a marketplace. And so the fact that they've got a like reasonably sized marketplace is pretty impressive considering the short time span that they built it in since like 2020. Uh, but what, which is what he talks about. He's like, they, they launched the marketplace in 2020 and moved away from being an individual seller. Now, I think a lot of these changes potentially had something to do with COVID being really hard for magic sellers because you couldn't sell cards in person for a while, basically. And so there were a lot of changes that had to happen in this space during that time. And the, these are just adjustments that maybe had to happen and maybe they're still trying to recover from those. And maybe that's why they were more willing to be acquired or combine forces is what it's saying. But yeah, a new exciting chapter for all three companies. Um, they set the industry standard for TCG pricing, which is true. Like looking up TCG player prices when you're making trades is, uh, yeah, makes a lot of sense. And then complementary capabilities is another big thing here because it's not like they're doing exactly the same things because even though they do similar things, Channel Fireball has specialized and become known for different things than uh, TCG player. And then they just also want to say for customers, everything will remain unchanged for sellers and partners. Our existing agreements will remain unchanged until they uh, are actually closing the transaction in a few weeks. And so we'll all monitor the situation and maybe make another video or announcement. If there's anything else interesting, everything remains business as usual. And uh, yeah, I want to thank everyone. Heart partnership, incredible milestone and the unprecedented opportunities ahead. So the president, John Sasso. So Pretty much channel fireball getting acquired i want to talk about briefly pros and cons i already talked about a little bit of cons for potentially the middleman maybe higher fees selling on tcg player than channel fireball or maybe once they combine forces the fees will go up as there are fewer competitors in the market all of a sudden but i don't think that's really going to be a huge factor in things because as i was saying the tcg player is already so much bigger that they don't really have to change their marketplace business model as much when they were already kind of dominating the competition in that, that sphere i think the more likely outcome is that channel fireball loses some of its employees because they're not going to like need all of the people to transfer over um and also well, one thing i didn't mention is that channel fireball has like event organizing capabilities because um they've just done that in the past before they uh, launch pro tours for flesh and blood they've run grand prix for magic the gathering and that's also a capability that tcg player is acquiring and potentially a way for them to uh, uh do something that they haven't done before but that was a little bit more of a minor thing um some of the benefits i think that this sort of thing it can be easy to forget that companies like channel fireball might just straight up go out of business if there wasn't this sort of acquisition the people that you enjoy consuming content from might be not be able to make content anymore if they don't have a like company backing them like this 
And so there is a potential chance we don't get to see the behind the scenes, but there's a chance that maybe Channel Fireball was the options were we're either going to cease to exist as a company or we're going to be bought out. Or it's like the buyout is so nice for them because it just lets them do new and exciting stuff with their content because they have such a big amount of backing. Maybe they can innovate more instead of just doing like tried or true conservative things uh, where they're just like, OK, this is guaranteed to get some amount of views versus trying this new exciting thing. Uh, being part of a bigger organization gives you more potential for doing those sorts of splashy things where maybe it would have a high payoff, but it's a high risk uh, endeavor to do. Like maybe it needs a high budget to get underway. But once you have like maybe it's like a big prize pool tournament or something like that, and you can just have a bigger prize pool and a bigger audience that it reaches because you have a bigger company backing you, that sort of thing. Uh, but generally, I think that it's just going to be kind of a combination that doesn't actually hurt the consumer. And I think that is uh, just not how the the marketplace works in this case, because even though they're competitors, I don't think they were really competitive competing in the same spaces when it came to like being the best in a particular space. And it just seems like now TCG player has probably the best content, the best binder POS, <laughs> the best point of sale, and also the best place to buy cards. And uh, yeah, just generally something that I think could be potentially really beneficial for all parties involved, especially if channel fireball wasn't going to be able to continue to exist, or if they wanted to do stuff that they weren't able to do, it could be a, a really nice partnership overall. And uh, I'm really excited to see what it takes us. I also want to conclude with a little bit of a note. I do have an affiliate link with TCG player, but since making magic limited content doesn't really sell tons of cards. That's not really, that's not factoring in at all to my analysis. I have used uh channel fire. I've read channel fireball content for years. I have bought cards from them. I have a member of CFE pro. So I do have a interest and knowledge of channel fireball and I have bought cards primarily from TCG player, even before they uh, get, ha had an affiliate link partnership with me because that was just the cheapest place for me to buy cards. So um, it's easy for people to be like, Oh, you're just shilling for the, people that sponsor you but it's, i have an affiliate link that <laughs> honestly doesn't even generate that much revenue just because i don't sell many cards by making <laughs> content about draft on <laughs> mtg arena where people are like <laughs> they're not buying the cards from my draft deck so it's not like i'm, I'm not uh being a uh, corporate shill as it as it were just in case people are um making those sorts of observations but yeah i just found this topic really interesting i always love diving into economics stuff and so if you uh did make it all the way to the end of this video leave hashtag vertical to let me know you made it all the way to the end because i think that's going to be the primary misunderstanding about this topic thinking that this is a horizontal acquisition instead of a vertical acquisition and i think that uh, uh, even though this is obviously a pr announcement i think that this is probably more likely to be a vertical uh acquisition that's going to help them kind of get stuff along the chain instead of like taking it out of competitor um and so leave hashtag vertical to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video hit that thumbs up button and uh leave a comment i'm really interested to hear your thoughts on this topic i'd be happy to answer more specific questions in the comments and things like that and also subscribe for more if you'd like to support my content you can buy cards using my affiliate link um if you wanted to buy cards um or just check out the nikolai volos patreon linked in the description down below but yeah just really interesting stuff um end of an era for sure channel fireball um, maybe gonna not even be around anymore. They might let them keep their name for some of their content, uh, because it's got such a positive brand image, I would say, but overall really interesting. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you next time.